Hi, this is Greg Hughes. Let's talk a little bit about search engine optimization, or SEO, and the 90-second website builder. Search engine optimization is a little bit controversial, and it's very misunderstood, mostly because it changes all the time. Google makes a lot of changes in what they look for, what they emphasize, and some things that we used to do for SEO, Google doesn't care about anymore, and then some things we haven't put enough emphasis on, Google really cares about. But the fundamentals, the basic fundamentals of good search engine optimization mostly stay the same. So let's talk about some of those. First, search engine optimization, of course, it means to optimize your website so that the search engines, namely Google, will like your website enough to want to rank it as high as possible for a particular keyword or key phrase. So you want to make sure your website can be found on Google for the search phrases you want to be found for. Some of the fundamentals are this, and this seems to always be true. Good search engine optimization is just about having a good website with good content. Well, that just means content that is relevant to the topic of your website. So if I had a website about magic tricks, then my content or the words that I use in my text should refer to magic tricks and rope tricks and magicians and all of the things that I would want to rank for in that topic or in that niche. So the content, when we talk about the content, we're talking about the text because Google's search engines can read our text when they index or spider the website and they can read the code. They can read the tags that are in the code. Now, when we put an image on our website, Google doesn't really see that because there's no code to that that, it's, that really matters except for the title of that image and what we'll call the alt tag. And I'll show you that in just a minute. So there are some fundamental things, but the basic is make sure your website is relevant and the content is on it is relevant. Make sure you don't overuse keywords that, um, you know, if my site was about magic tricks, I don't want the phrase magic tricks on my web page a million times because that looks fishy to Google. That looks like we're keyword stuffing or keyword spamming, it's even been called. So what should you do? Well, here are the basics. Again, your content. The other thing is the titles of your web pages. So your home page, of course, needs to be called index.html. And that you want to keep always index. But all of your other pages should have titles that are also keyword rich. Now, assuming you've done your keyword research and you know what you want your website to be known for, you're going to want to name your pages accordingly. So if I had a website, again, about magic tricks, I might have one page that's magic tricks with coins and another page that's you know, tricks for kids or whatever, I want to make sure I name my pages in ways that will be uh, sensible to the content of my website. So naming your pages is important. And of course, a 90 second website builder, that's very easy to do. So let's move the camera over here and let's talk about naming pages. Let me make a new page. In the site manager, you can just click on this icon to make a new page and uh, notice it fell under index is a child page. I don't need it to be there. Let's put it on the same level. If I want to name this page, I just right click on it and rename it. So I would call it whatever I want to call it. And it's a good idea if we're going to have words like that to use underscores or dashes. There. Now I've renamed the page. So that page has that file name. That's different than the title of the page, by the way. That's the name of the file is now a keyword named page. So it's not a bad idea to do that. But let's go back over here and look at some other things we can do for search engine optimization besides naming the pages. One of the things we can do is I'm going to right click and go to page properties. And this is probably one of the most important things you can do regarding search engine optimization and your website. And that is your title tag. Now I made a separate video just about title tag because it's very important to know. But as you can see, the title defaults to untitled page. You don't want that. You want this to be what your page is about and hopefully have some important keywords in it. So if my website was about magic tricks, I might want to title it accordingly. Notice the menu name is picked up by the name of the file. That's really important right now. That's the file name, not the title of the page. The title is what will show up in Google's search when my site is ranked. Okay, so that's one SEO thing we can do. Now let's look at the next uh, search engine optimization thing we can do here in the page properties. You'll notice there's a tab called meta tags. 
Now, there are several kinds of meta tags, and some of them are no longer paid attention to by Google. And uh, there's a lot of controversy about this, again, because it changes a lot. And I would say the two most important ones that you're going to want to pay attention to are the keyword meta tags and the description. And that's about it. You can put in the author name if you want to. You can use categories for this. You can type in, uh, you know, whatever you want here in the user defined. But mostly Google doesn't pay much attention to those. So I wouldn't spend a lot of time on that. If you want to leave the name of the program that generated your website, you can do that. But you don't have to. You can take that out. It doesn't really have any effect on your own search engine optimization. What really matters more are the keywords in the description. Now, one of the mistakes people make with the keywords is that they put too many. You don't want 50, 60, 100 keywords in here because Google really doesn't pay attention to any more than the first few. And even that's up for grabs. Some search engine optimization experts are even saying Google ignores these keywords. I'm not sure that's always true. I think it's probably a good idea to put in four, five, maybe six major keywords in your keywords meta tags. It certainly won't hurt your website. And the same for the description. Sometimes this is what will come up when your site is listed in some search engines. The title of the uh, page, which we just did under the general tab, the title, as well as the description. And here you'd want to put no more than, say, 20 or 25 words, maybe a sentence. Great and easy to do magic tricks for kids. And that's all we'd put in the description. And then we're pretty much done with that. Now, you can apply these tags, whether you've used the keywords and description or if you've filled in all of these, you can apply this to every page in your website by clicking this button, or you can do a different tag, set of tags for each page, which is probably a better idea to do separate tags for each page. That way you can kind of mix up your keywords and spread them out accordingly. The other search engine optimization thing you're going to want to pay attention to, and this is also worth looking at, is under the miscellaneous tabs here in Page Properties, where you can tell the search engine how to index your page. And this is fairly important. There will be a time in many cases where you'll want to know how to do this. Now, if you don't do anything, what is going to happen by default is Google will eventually index your page and they will eventually follow the outgoing links that are on this page. Now, there's a tag for that called index follow. That means when Google comes to this page, you're saying, please index this page. In other words, we want it listed. We want this specific page, not just the website, but this page listed. And we want you, Google, to follow all of the links or outgoing links on this page um, and count them for you know somebody's backlinks at some point. Now, if you don't choose this, it's really kind of redundant to have this because it's the same as not doing anything. Because by default, Google will index and follow a page. So you can, you can either select this or not, and it will be the same thing. However, you might want to index your page. In other words, have Google index it, but you don't want Google to follow the links. Now, this is not as common but there might be a time when you would choose this because you might have a web page that has a number of outgoing links. Let's say a hundred links on it. Well, you might not want Google to notice that because a lot of links, too many links on one page can look suspicious to them. And so you might just say, I want you to index the page, but don't pay attention to any of the outgoing links on this page. And that's how you would do that. You would say index, but don't follow. The next choice is to not index the page, but follow the links, which is the opposite request we just made from the previous one. And then, of course, if you want this page to be completely ignored by Google, you're telling Google, don't index this page. In other words, don't list it in your search engine and don't follow the links that are on this page. Now, this is more common because this is a way of protecting this page from being found in Google. You might have a page on your website that you don't want just anybody to get to. Maybe a, a, a download page or a page that's uh, you know, protected in some other way, and you don't want the search engine to find it. This is just another way to protect that page, to protect that content, so that people can't just Google and find this page. So you're telling them, don't index it, don't list it in the search engine, and don't follow the links. So this one and the first one are the most common. And again, 
choosing this is the same as choosing nothing because that's the default that Google will look for. Now you'll notice there's also a revisit tag that's available. This is not used nearly as much as it used to be, so you can ignore this because Google is going to revisit your page anyway if you have selected it to be indexed. Then Google's going to visit your page and it's going to decide whether it's going to relist it or how it's going to list it because it's going to look for changed content. If your content hasn't changed or uh, it doesn't look like anything's you know new on your site, then Google will, re will respond according to that. So this is a, an older tag as well as the expire tag. You really don't need to use these in most cases. When you're doing your search engine optimization, the most important thing is to know how to set up your robot if you want to protect the page from a search engine, the title of it, the title of your page, the uh, keyword and description, and then you've pretty much done your, your on-site SEO for your page properties. Now, assuming that you've got good content, meaning the text that you're using is keyword rich and you've done all of that, what about your images? Now, again, we said Google doesn't really see an image from a code standpoint. Let's put an image here. But what Google will see in your image is the name of that image, the title of it, even the file name. If you want to change the file name, you can do that. Here is this file happens to be called 01.png. So I might want to change the name of this, I'll open this image up on my desktop and rename it before I import it. Maybe call it, you know, magictricks.png or whatever. I can do that. But you don't have to. And again, you don't want to overdo that kind of um, SEO. You don't want to overdo it. You want it to be natural. But this is called an alt tag where we are here, an alternate text. And this is just another place to put um, a keyword. You know, I could say magic tricks or coin tricks or whatever here. I wouldn't want to do it all the same. And I'd want to mix it up and be careful. And the same thing with the title of this image. But that does help Google see a little bit more of your content uh, rather than just see, you know, code for a, a, an image that doesn't mean anything or doesn't have anything to do with your content. That's the basic stuff when it comes to SEO, and it's very simple to do in 90 Second Website Builder.